What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through tonight's MLB slate. Um, I did not have luck last night. I actually doubled my money on FanDuel, so I guess that's good. But uh, I, I cashed in all my FanDuel lineups. I did not do well on DraftKings, and it feels frustrating to have that happen on nights where you get a lot of the things right. I, I, I did do the one of the red stacks with Hunter Green, but I, I probably could have taken a couple more stabs there once, once we got the late start time by 10 minutes and all that. It just was hard to figure that out. Also, it's hard to know he's going to go out there and have like one of the best games that any pitchers had this year. Um, and uh, I, but I, I was I was on I was on it with the Mets, and I'm, it looked like I was on it with Houston, although that they just did nothing after the second inning. But so I felt like it could have been a much better night. Not uh, not good for me at all on DraftKings. Good on FanDuel. She how'd you do? And then uh, let's talk about the slate. Yeah, so I faded the whole Cincinnati thing. So um, so that means I didn't have Hunter Green, which put me in the kind of a tough spot. But um, I did have one. Uh, one lineup on DraftKings that ended up with uh, with like almost 200 points that got like 30 30th in the lottery or something. Oh like wow, that. that's a big. Uh, yeah, so I had all the Mets and I had uh, of course uh, MVP Cal Raleigh and and, yeah. and 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 Rodriguez from Seattle and oh you and, had that, that Seattle mini stack huh? Yeah, and and Carrasco and then. Um, and, and they let and Syndergaard did just barely enough to just make it passable at 13 points. Hey, that was a that was a rock star performance. If you look yeah, at but, Hunter Green, but, but the real the real MVP was freaking, but not for me. Was freaking Michael Waka. What the hell? Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I ended up with one of him, and by the, by the time the slate was done, I was just sort of like, okay, I'll throw one of these guys in here. I'll throw one of these guys in there because yeah. so much weirdness. But all right, well, we got a big one today. Do you want to start jumping into it? We'll go game by game. Uh, Yes. Let me pull up my screen. Okay. Um, and guys, please do like and subscribe and all that stuff. I always forget to say it, and it really does help us out. So I appreciate it. Because because I'm, I'm pretty. I think I think I know what I'm doing today. I think oh, I'm, you do. You already got an idea of it. Okay. I, I do. I, right. I do. So let me pull up my screen. Okay. Um, and uh, one other thing, I'm gonna, I'm going to do a show with our other guy uh, Goldie, and, and we're gonna we're gonna do one after this, just to sort of probably going to be similar in terms of going through the slate, but we're going to talk through his uh, his process and all that stuff because I think he's a uh, He's a pretty, pretty, pretty sharp guy. And uh, I think you guys will get something out of it. So, so she's, let's talk about it. So you already know what you're going to do overall or just I think like, so. I okay, think so. so, so let's, let's start off with, you know, before we do go game by game, is there anything you, you think that we should, uh, that you have like an overall, uh, how am I going to fade this guy? Sometimes you have those when we come in. No, um, it, I, I actually feel as though it's uh there's a couple of different ways that you can go. I think it is going to be a day where you do one, one expensive picture and, and, and one cheapo. Um, and then I think that you could pick from a whole bunch of stacks and I just, I just, I'm just feeling it that I think I have, I have the right one. All so right. We'll, I love it. We'll see. All right. All right. Let's talk about game by game here. Un unfortunately, we're, we're going to have a little bit of weather concerns and maybe fortunately it may not matter to us those particular camps. So, um, all right. The first one on the up, up, we've got Chicago and Baltimore and this is like, I don't know. It's it it's it's a pretty low total when you see these teams. You do have a little bit of weather concerns in this game, but it, it, I think that you know, as of right now, it doesn't look as scary as some of the other ones. You get some wind blowing out at seventy four degrees. It's not like both these pitchers are are young and have, I guess, talent ish. Um, I don't know. I, I'm sort of like up in the air with what I want to do here. I think the slate's so big. I don't know if I want to stack either of these teams, but I'm kind of open to the idea of playing Kyle Bradish, which may be a huge mistake, but that's what I'm considering. Um, well, I hope I I, I, well, I hope not because I'm currently coin flipping between him and one other guy for my SP2. Um, okay. I, I, I think it's totally reasonable. Um, mm -hmm. He's got talent, Cub, you know, uh, which we call it Cub Stink and uh, hashtag analysis, right? Right, right. Um, right. And like I said, I'm going to probably pay up for one of those two top pitchers and, and, and paying down gets me this other stuff that I want. So um, I think Bradish is totally totally in play um uh right now he's looking below no own but i, I just uh listen I, i've just done this enough where if, if it's showing up as a decent point per dollar play for me it's going to show up as a decent point per dollar play for everybody and he's just going to get ownership i think but we'll see um yeah. so he's current, i'm currently coin flipping with him and one other guy for my sp2 um uh i am not quite getting to baltimore in in any of my stacks nor am i getting to the cubs um, yeah, so, and, and by the way, I'm going to throw in also that Keegan Thompson should be considered as well. Um, he's a little bit more expensive, but 
it's another guy who's got enough talent. The matchup is strong enough um, that he could probably do, he'd probably be okay, but I probably am not going to end up going there. So I didn't really want to focus too much on him. All right, let's talk about Detroit and Pittsburgh. And this game does look like the weather is bad, which may be a good thing because I agree. I would I would have faded this game anyway, with the exception of maybe a, a cheap nonsense thing from Detroit or Scubal, who I I'm starting to I mean, I've always believed in the talent and I'm just starting to like I think we have to acknowledge that he's basically been as good as any pitcher in baseball in terms of fantasy output, you know, all but a couple games this year. He's been basically he's been 18 to 30 and or 18 to 37. And he's right there a lot. And this is a good matchup. So I, I would have had some, I would have some interest in Scooble, but because of any weather, I don't love him so much where I think I need to do it. So I will probably not play this game if I feel concerned. And, and again, the same thing could happen with Baltimore. That game has, you know, has some risk as well. So, um, but Scooble would be the only thing for me that, that really stands out. Anything for you if, you, if, the, if the game does play? Yeah. So, so Scooble would be the, um, would be one of the, the, one of the three pivots off of Rodon slash Verlander. You know what I mean? Like those are obviously the two top, top tier pitchers. And, and, and Scooble could be a lower own pivot to play, which um, I'm sort of glad that uh, it might rain out. Cause I, I don't know if I'd want to do it. Um, uh, Scooble would be like a perfect thing to do. You know what I mean? If there was a, a chalky stack you wanted to get to, you know, mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think, well, we'll see what happens with the game. Uh, if, if in fact he, if in fact he plays, he's certainly one of, again, one of the three pivots, I think. Um, and aside from what you just said, I mean, I, I have Detroit as kind of like a cheap nonsense, you know, value stack, which I hope I don't have to play. Yep. Um, and, and again, I just want to, I, I do think that, you know, I, I would have thought about more about Detroit, but I, I, Quintana actually has been much better than people are giving him credit for this year. And it's not that he's been like awesome or anything like that, but he's, he's just, I mean, he hasn't, he's allowed two home runs and 10 starts. Like, let's not go crazy with trying to stack on guys like that. I, I realize well, that. Well, that's the other, that's the other reason why I'm kind of glad this game might not play. Cause I, I might, I might talk myself into Quintana. Um, yeah. And I'd rather not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I hear you on that. Um, all right. Next up we have uh, St. Louis and Tampa Bay. Um, I, I, I think this is an interesting spot. Um, I think that the answer is probably we to do nothing in this game for me, but I certainly, you, you could talk me into taking a shot. It's weird to, to play Springs against that right-handed dominant of the lineup, but I do like this kid. I think he's good. Um, and I think that it's, it, he could have a decent enough outing at home, but I don't know. It's, he's cheap. I'm sort of fiddling what to do with that. This one. I, I think, I think Springs would be mildly in play. And Hudson would be mildly in play for me. Hudson actually pitched really well in his last outing. Just didn't the strikeouts just aren't there, so it's hard for him to play him on a big slate. But Springs and Hudson belong in the conversation if we're going to talk about Bradish, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I kind of lied. I'm basically in a three-man uh, coin flip for my SP two, and Springs is the other is one of the other the other two. Um, I have him rated pretty high, and mm-hmm. I think he's going to be. Um, I think he'll probably get some ownership, but maybe not that much. Um, like you said, I mean the Cardinals have all kinds of varieties. It's kind of scary, but. He's got mm-hmm. strikeouts in his, in his, in his resume uh, springs and he's only, you know, only 6,300. So mm-hmm. I think he's, very, I think he's very much in play um, and I'm not getting to any of it. Yeah. I am. Um, so spring, yeah, I think springs would be my preferred of the two, obviously, but I'm just, uh, I'm not into the hitting in this game. All right. So then we get into another one, um, Atlanta and Oakland. Why don't you start us off with this one? Cause I think that, I think that people are going to play. I, I actually like Kyle Wright a lot as a pitcher. And I think the matchup with Oakland will be enough that people actually really want to play him. Um, yeah, uh, he's one of the other uh, uh, natural pivots off of Rodon and Verlander. Um, I do have him a little bit worse than them, but I mean, he's going to be owned half as much. So uh, uh, I think he's think he's reasonable. Probably he's not going to be in my main lineup, but uh, I, if I play 20, I'm sure he's going to get in there. Um, and... I had Oakland as kind of a semi-value stack, but not really. Um, and I have Atlanta as kind of an overpriced primary stack, but not really. I mean, I, I'll probably get to some Atlanta, but they're not going to be my priority. I have like three other things I'm doing instead. Um, but uh, I think Kyle Wright is certainly reasonable, and I think Atlanta is certainly reasonable. Yeah, um, it's, it's good hitting weather in Atlanta. Um, it's always important, but 
I, I don't exactly understand why Atlanta's got such a high run total against. I don't think Cole Irvin is that bad. I mean, no. he's he's not great. He's but he's not he's not a bad pitcher. Um, yeah, Atlanta Atlanta has a high price stack. Um, certainly would be I think contrarian today because I don't think anybody's even with their run total. Maybe with the run total, people actually get on them, but I don't think they're going to be that crazy high owned and. As I always say, you give me a lefty or a righty, it doesn't really matter, but I love Acuna for one ops. Um, yeah. And uh, I do think the Atlanta stack is definitely viable, but it's uh, it's hope to get to Irvin early and then beat the hell out of that bullpen. It's terrible. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next up, we have your Yankees and the Twins. Uh, Sheets, I am basically... I, I don't know. I, I'm debating whether or not I want to take shots with the Yankees here against Sands. I, 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 tell me what you think on this one. You know, why not? I mean, I think it's okay. Um, I, not my favorite, but I'm, I'm never going to say, you know, don't play the Yankees, right? Um, mm-hmm. If anything, I mean, you'll, listen, you, you, know, you, you, know, you, know, you know me by now. I mean, you have Talia on, like, almost getting a no-hitter, a perfect game, whatever. I'll, I'm, I'm, I, I, if, I, if I was in the mood, I'd play Minnesota here. Um, but, uh, I don't think I'm in the mood. Uh, so I'm probably going to just avoid all sides of this game. Yeah. I think I'm off of it too. tyler has been awesome, but I'm not going to try and try and, uh, exactly chase. You still have, you don't, you still aren't getting the great K rate or anything like that. So you're really relying on him pitching like seven, eight innings, which for the Yankees is only going to happen if basically you're unhittable (laughs) to that point, um, with the bullpen they have. So I I do think the Yankees are, are definitely one of those other contrarian-ish stacks, uh, the stacks that people aren't going to play that much. I think you're going to see some ownership on, like LeMahieu's really cheap. Judges always gets owned somewhat. You do have a young pitcher against the Yankees, and that might maybe that's good enough um, just to say it's it's good to take a shit chance on the Yankees here. All right, um, let's get into this next one, because this is uh, – you have a top, top, top-level prospect in baseball against my Dodgers here. And my general thinking is that's always a good time to stack the Dodgers. Uh, I, I don't even care how high level the guy is. I would, I would take shots with anybody because there is a wide range of outcomes for these young guys, as we saw against Toronto last time Kopech pitched. Um, hadn't a lot of home run before that game, but only pitched three innings, gave up five runs and uh, was yanked early. And, you know, look, hard throwing righties are not, the Dodgers don't struggle with that. So, I'm open to the idea here of, of playing some Dodgers. I'm just going to double check the weather as we go through this and not ideal hitting weather. You know what? 63 degrees with, with 10 miles an hour blowing in. That might take me a little bit off of what I, my little weird thing I was going to do. And the weird thing is the Dodgers are actually projecting for a little bit more ownership than I think they should uh, early in the day. It might, might change later, but uh, the lefties for the Dodgers are in play for me, and that is all I'm doing in this game. How about you? So, so who are those? So, so Muncy's on the injured list. Rios is on the injured list. Yeah, um, it'd be Freeman. Freeman is way too cheap. He's Freeman second. and Bellinger are too cheap, I think. Yeah, Freeman and yeah, and Bellinger. Um, if Lux wasn't batting ninth, I guess. But I mean, then you could fill it out as a five man. The problem is that 63 degree weather with the wind blowing in on a big slate against the top a top level quality anyway, why as arm. The uh, the thing is though, guys who get wild against the Dodgers, it's really a bad, it's, it's usually bad news for them. It's just hard for them to take advantage of the power with the hitting conditions being so much poorer than so many other games on the slate. Yeah. I'm not getting quite to the Dodgers, um, but I, I will certainly use those two as, as kind of uh, one-offs uh, mm-hmm. Freeman and Bellinger. Um, yeah. And uh, definitely not going to try co-pitch or, Whoever the Dodger pitcher is, who's it? White, Mitch White, Mitch White. Yeah, you're not gonna. I don't think you're. You're, you're not gonna do anything with Mitch White here. Uh, he's, he's got. He doesn't have much of a leash, and it's not like it's a dream matchup. But at the same time, Dodgers have a good bullpen. But you know, the, I guess there's an argument for some of these White Sox. I mean, you've got Lurie Garcia at 2800 leading off. Gavin Sheets at 2400. A guy who I'm at 20. I'm 2400 for Gavin Sheets. That's just too much power for a guy who's that cheap. Um, yeah. Now the Dodgers could bring in, you know, you could see a lefty later, but I don't think so. I mean, I think you'd, you'd want to keep it righty dominant against a pretty good righty lineup. Um, yeah, I, I think it's just, it's just, just, just guys like Garcia and Sheets stood out for me for their price. And, and actually they're all pretty cheap on, on the White Sox side. I just don't think I want to get crazy with a stack in this, uh, on this day. And, uh, and that wind blowing in from left center shouldn't affect the lefty power as much. So I'm, I'm okay with the uh, Gavin Sheets. 
All right, uh, Seattle at Houston. What are you doing here, Sheets? What are we so doing? Berland, so Verlander is one of the top two um, on the slate, so he's certainly going to be considered. I still don't know whether it's going to be him or Rodone uh, as, as my top guy. So hoping to talk through that a little bit with you. Yeah. Um, uh, and then Houston um, is showing up as a, as a stack. I might be interested in also. The problem is that they're all really expensive. I mean, you have Alvarez at 5,900. Now, Tuve, I guess, is reasonable enough. Boy, this, this – um, who is it, the third the third baseman? The, the rookie, I forget who it is. Um, yeah, Pena, I like him. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Houston, I have some interest in. Again, they're not my favorite, but they're one of my top three, actually. And I know sometimes attacking flex is not the greatest thing in the world, but uh, still kind of like it. Um, so, what, what, do you, what do you think? You like Verlander the best, or you like him uh, – where, where are you? I'm always going to err towards Verlander because like, like we talked about with, with guys like he and Cole, uh, they stand out, especially like they can struggle. Like, you know, you gave up three runs in the first inning and then had like two runners on and nobody out in the second and ended up, you know, pitching, a getting 18 fantasy points for you, which is not what you want, but that's after really right. struggling. You know what I mean? So I just feel like there's, there's some upside for him. This is a, an interesting spot to, to maybe play like Flexen has a lot of experience against Houston. What I would warn people when they think Houston's a great stack, I'll just say that they've hit three home runs and 120 plate appearances. That's not exactly ideal. Um, right. That's actually really, really a low number, but they've only struck out 19 times in 120 plate appearances. That's, that's sort of piques my interest as a little bit of a, you know, that could be a, could be a potentially stackable side. I don't love it though. Like I feel like that's sort of how I do with a lot of these teams today. I just don't love, love it. Um, I think Kyle Tucker, uh, 4,600 is totally reasonable. Uh, it's, uh, you know, we have to wait to see how the lineup shakes out, but I think, I think they're viable. I just don't think they're my favorite uh, as of right now, but I am going to have Verlander as my priority. And I think that, I think you are going to be able to double spend up a pitcher with some of the value, even with some of these expensive stacks. Um, all right, let's go move over to uh, Toronto and KC. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, if, if, why is not Alec Manoa in this conversation just the same as these guys with us? Now we know the well, Royals. He, well, he well he is. I mean, you know, he is right. It, it, but it's but I, I definitely think it's it's a pivot. I mean, you know what I mean. I don't think it's a. Um, I don't think he's as likely as as Rodon or Verlander, but he's going to be less owned for sure, and he certainly has pretty big freaking upside. And you know, KC's got a three total, right? It's not like <laughs> it's not like right. everybody else is that much, but not much worse. Um, and you're getting him off of like not the greatest performances last game. So I think it'll keep, keep ownership down a little bit as well. And I mean, he certainly has this, you know, he can certainly do it. So I, I think it's totally reasonable. Yeah. And, and it's very strange to see Manoa with only a five and a half K prop. Um, that's just because Casey doesn't strike out all that much, but I will immediately tell you, I'll, I'll post my, 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 my prop bets of the day a little later, but this is one that I really like is the Manoa Manoa over five and a half strikeouts. I also like Verlander, who's also got the same strikeout prop at four and a, at five and a half. Um, that's just too low. And and even Scooble at five and a half. These got these all feel a little bit low on, on, on that side to me. So I like Manoa. Um, I think that he's behind Verlander for me and probably right in the same breath as Scooble, maybe a little bit ahead of him. Um and I think you're gonna want to play uh I mean, look, it's it's Brad Keller who I've pointed out over and over. He's another one of these guys that just sort of seem, somehow gets through these games without getting too much damage done. He's been getting hit, hit a little bit harder, and he's not striking people out. And if you don't strike out these these Blue Jays, you're going to be in trouble. So I do have the Blue Jays as a better stack than the other ones we've talked about so far. Unfortunately, they're probably going to have some some a bit of ownership to come with them, but they're so they're not even so expensive anymore. It's just. The, the ones who will be little, maybe overlooked will be like maybe Springer and Bichette just because of the pricing. But I, I mean, Vlad at 4,700, that's just kind of crazy. Um, so I definitely have interest in Toronto as a stack, even though I don't usually stack against Keller on big slates. Yeah. I like Toronto. Um, again, not my, they're one of my top three. Um, and I, I don't know what to do about Manoa. Um, I'll, I'll get him in my MME. I don't think I'll get him in my big one. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Um, all right. The uh, Philly, uh, Philly and Milwaukee. Boy, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to do here exactly because I'm, in, I'm open to the idea of Jason Alexander uh, as another cheap option, but I don't think I'm going to do it. 
Uh, I think Ranger Suarez has talent. Still feel a little hesitant to do it. This feels like a stay away game for me at the moment, but I don't mind the idea of going the other way and maybe thinking about a Philadelphia stack um, against Alexander, specifically Schwarber at 4,300 at the top, uh, Bryce Harper, 5,100. Everybody's price is a little bit more reasonable than, than we've seen at times for these guys. And then, uh, yeah, I just, I just think they're interesting. I think that I'm open to a Philly, at least a mini stack, potentially a full stack here. Yeah. Currently now that's, that's my favorite of the day is Philly. Um, mm. Yeah. I just think it's a, it's a really decent blend of, of, of upside and, and maybe under the radar just a little bit, you know, and, and I, I just kind of like this whole idea, you know? Um, uh, so that's just kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I didn't really, did, you know, deep dive into Suarez all that much. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at. All those guys that you mentioned, I think they're all, they're all pretty reasonable. Even, even I mean, pretty much everybody's under 5k, I think. On, yep. on, the, on the whole, on the, in the, in the slate, excuse me, on the stack. So except for um, yeah, I'll, Harper's 51, but not right. Close, but yeah. I'll, I, that's no problem. Uh, yeah. Again, if I pay down for my second pitcher, I really can get these guys in really easily. Yeah. And by the way, you know, I, I keep saying, I, I think people will be off of Suarez because he struggled. The one thing I give him credit, I'll, I'll say about him, look who he's been struggling against though. I mean, the giants are never a picnic um, Atlanta and the Dodgers. You're, you're going to have bad outings against teams like that. So I'm not as I'm open more to Suarez. It's just probably not the right slate for me. Cause I like the high end pitching that I'm open to some of the really low end and he kind of just fits in the middle, but I do think that he's, I do think he's in play. All right. Uh, what are we doing with uh, the Boston, Boston and the angels here sheets? Um, I guess resisting the temptation to play Whitlock. Um, yeah. Cause he's another one that, that I'm uh I'm really, th- I'm really thinking about as an SP two. I'm, I'm, I'm probably doing something different, but um, I mean, he certainly has strikeout upside, and hey, um, he has, he has implied. He, he, I don't know if he does. Does he? Because he's only. He, I mean, he struck. He pitched six innings last time against Cincinnati, and he did nothing. Yeah, he had it. zero earned runs and had no strikeouts. Yeah, and no walks too, by the way, which is nice. But yeah, yeah, it's weird with him. I don't know. What to, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, I'll. I mean, I'll probably get to him in, in something, but I don't think I'm going to play him in my main one. And then, um, and then there's Boston, who I just I'd rather I'd rather just not play. Um, Detmers, you know, I've, I've played Detmers a couple of times, and he he's really hasn't doesn't really do it for me. If you want to know the truth? Um, so I, I don't know if I I don't know if I could play. I can know if I could play him, and and I am I am concerned that Boston gets at you know gets to him. But um, I don't have Boston as one of my top stacks anywhere. Yeah, uh, Boston has seen him once already. He doesn't strike out many. Um, I always give Boston a, it's a massive park downgrade. I mean, they play in a joke of a, of a stadium. Um, and, and so anytime they're out of Boston, it's always hard for me to click that button. Yeah. But I, I, I do think that they so certainly make, a, make some sense, particularly um, – well, I mean, yeah, you've got you've got Kike, you've got JD, Xander, and Story would stand out, I and mean, even Devers and the lefty lefty. I, the stack definitely makes a little bit of sense considering how few guys. I mean, Detmers threw a no hitter with two strikeouts. Yeah, um, that's like not even doable. I mean, that's, I I think I think only one guy, Scott Erickson, I think it was, had one strikeout and a no hitter that he pitched. I think there was five errors in that game also, and I think he gave up a run. But um, anyway, but there there it's just I just. I don't know. I, I, I think Whitlock is in play, but I don't feel great about either of the low K guys. The one thing I'll say is that the angels do strike out and there's an argument here for the angels at really low ownership. And I don't usually play the angels as much as maybe some other people do. Cause they're usually over-owned. If you're going to tell me against a, a rookie pitcher that nobody's going to play trout and Otani yeah. um, with the cheap Jared with cheap Matt Duffy at the top, Jared Walsh and Max Dossi, one of the better hitting catchers. I think you've got like a natural stack that just is going to be really low owned. So I might actually do something with these angels tonight. You got a little wind blowing out 72 degrees. The weather's getting a little warmer. Um, so I can actually get behind a, a, a an angel stack here where, uh, where they're going to be very, very low owned. Um, all right. So the next game we have is the Mets and San Diego. I am basically going to be off of this game. Um, I, I have a lot of respect for the Mets lineup. I am, I would usually be considering playing you here because I think he's a little cheap for what he is and he's going to be very low owned. 
maybe I'll, maybe I'll throw maybe maybe I'll consider him in something. Hey, they, just, they did just score ten runs. Maybe maybe they come back and have a dud today. But I, I feel like this is more of a sort of a stay away from everything game. With um, you could make a really contrarian San Diego stack that no one's going to play. And Tywin Walker, as much as everybody says how much power he gives up, he's given up two home runs this year um, in what seven eight starts. Um, and he's been good against good teams in terms of not getting damaged, but San Diego's offense, they've got cheap options. They've got guys you can build a mini stack with really easily. So maybe a secondary stack with like a Mazzara, Voight, um, depending on how the lineup shakes out, whether it be Mazzara, Voight, and then you could always play Nomar if you, I'm sorry, uh, Manny, if you wanted to, or uh, include the uh, Cronenworth or Grisham, if they somehow ever move him up in the lineup. There's just a lot, and Hosmer's also 2,900. They're just really cheap. So maybe some complimentary three-man stack or something like that I could get behind for San Diego, but definitely not a game I'm targeting. Yeah, I'm probably going to avoid it. Uh, I like Cronenworth as kind of a one-off, um, maybe. Um, I, I'd love, I would like to try to – I thought I, – I was thinking about taking shots at San Diego, but um, I'm probably just not going to get there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I'm sort of, I'm sort of fiddled with that idea myself. It's also strange with a below – less than four run total. You don't usually see that for teams facing Walker these days. All right. Um, the Rockies and the Giants. Boy, this is a uh, – I don't know what has happened to our guy here. It's, it's been an ugly, an ugly little run for him. I'm still kind of tempted. I, I just – I don't know, man. I, it's, the craziest part is he's still pitching innings. He's getting hit a lot. But um, I don't know. I'm, I'm open to – Rodon obviously is a great play, uh, but he he belongs in that conversation. But if you want to, do you go like do you like him better than than, than Verlander? You think? Um. Yeah, probably. Uh, that's a really good question. I think it's very close between the two of them. I think Verlander is actually. I mean, one, one thing I'd say is Rodon has been really bad and his or hasn't been good at all in his last few few starts or his last four starts, and Verlander. Ah, uh, I think I, I think I like Verlander a tiny bit better, but they are one and two. Um, who who do you now? Who do you, who do you like more, uh, Marquez, Bradish, or Springs? Um, I think Springs is the right answer. I think I might take a shot. I mean, one thing that's interesting is that Marquez has like a a, a four and a half K prop, and he's fifty three hundred. It's a pretty high number for a guy who's who's fifty who's that cheap. The problem is he just keeps getting hit. And I am also completely on board if you want to stack San Francisco. Um, like this is a, I mean, I, I don't even necessarily know who to play. They're all expensive and it's weird. And they're picking plays <coughs> in San Francisco, which feels strange. It's 58 degrees. Uh, I don't even know who to play from there, but I, I do feel like the way Marquez has looked at, at times, or Marquez looked at times, it's just, it's attempting to, to sort of both take both sides of it. But I'm probably going to uh, – I probably will throw one, one Marquez and Mar Mar Marquis and Bradish lineup together just for fun and leave it in a smaller buy-in tournament. But I don't think I'm going to prioritize anybody anything from this game as of right now. You know, I thought of that, um, wh whether, it's, whether it's worth uh, doing something like, like Bradish Marquis or Bradish Springs or Springs Marquis or something like that. I didn't see that just, I didn't see the need for it. You know, I, I didn't see the, yeah. the, the big stack that I really wanted to get um, to do that. Um, yep. But I, I'm, this is, this is part of my coin flip, right? Between Marquez Springs and Bradish for my, for my SP2. I'm going to probably play one of them. Just don't know exactly which one it's going to be yet. And I, listen, I, and I have no problem just, just, you know, play, play Marquez, Marquez. Um, uh, do me a favor, just pause for just a second. Sorry. So back to pitching sheets with Marquis. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'll probably try it. <laughs> I, I think I'm I, probably I, gonna have to try it too. You know, I think I'm gonna try it. I mean, listen, I'll just sit there on my sit there on my fat ass all day, root for the root for the runs, and then we'll have like you know players remaining two like 18 innings left. That is both both pitchers coming from this game. Just ho hope the candlestick is or whatever whatever it's called nowadays uh, is 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 favorable. And uh, may, hey, maybe we get lucky. Maybe we get a good umpire also. Um, but but I don't know. I, I I still don't know what between Verlander and Rodon what I'm gonna do. Um, it's gonna it's gonna I'm telling you, it's gonna be one of those two with one of those three cheapos and probably the Phillies. If, if it looks if it, if it if it locked now, which it which it doesn't. But uh, that's where I'm that's where I'm thinking right now. Yeah, I I, I like um, 
Yeah, I, I got you. I, I think I'm I think I'm on the same page here a little bit where I'm going to try it, but I don't know why exactly. Because I think what I'm going to do with my other lineups, because there is some value, which I'll highlight in just a second, but I think I am going to make some Verlander, Manoa, Rodon, Skubal all together, like pairings of those two, just double spending up. Some of the cheap bats that there are out there today, like get, like you have Biggio at 2,300. He'll be a really popular one. Um, Tapia also in the Toronto stacks. If you wanted to do a Toronto stack, you could even do it cheaply because of these guys. Uh, Luke Voigt, Nomar Mazzara, Matt Duffy, uh, the, all the uh, Gavin Sheets. All these guys are cheap enough where I can sort of round out a stack and play two guys who are spending up on, even if you're not getting the exact guys you want from the stack all the time. I think it's a, a viable route. I also think that taking that weird other angle is, is interesting. But I just with all these aces on the mound tonight, I sort of expect some of this, somebody to have the, the, the big game, right? And uh, Rodon and Verlander could easily just destroy the slate, as could Manoa and Scooble, by the way. Um, for what it's worth, uh, you do have the best pitchers umpire in baseball, or one of them, uh, and Phil Cuzzy in, in New Darvish in that, that San Diego game. And that does make uh, you Darvish maybe a little more appealing because that's he can get himself in trouble sometimes by mm -hmm. getting deep in counts. So I'm actually going to put Darvish on that list of priority guys who I'm going to make sure to at least get a little exposure to, even though I do fear the Mets a little bit. The Mets do strike out as well, but they, they also hit. Um, all right. So that's what I've got. And then I mentioned I mentioned the, the cheapy plays that I had, um, but I also want to throw out another one, other two. I, I just think that Freeman's price and and uh and what's his one of freeman or vlad will probably be in most of my lineups at first base just because the price is too low for both of them I, I would mention that it looks as though they're adding this texas cleveland game to the to the slate here um really i don't even have it i don't on. know i'm looking at my draft i'm looking at my screen it says 9 45 but they're all red I, I don't know what exactly this means um we'll have to we'll have to keep an eye on it yeah i'll revisit that one at live at six eastern but uh, but yeah, that's what I've got. And I've got the stacks as Toronto, Atlanta. Uh, well, I guess the one that I like the most would be Toronto. But I am interested in the Angels. Um, I'm interested in Houston, the Yankees, and Philly. But I, I don't feel that strong about any of them except for Toronto. And even that one, I'm not like overwhelmingly in love with it. For a big slate, it's not not like an obvious where everyone's going to go place. Although they will end up going somewhere, but early in the day, it's kind of hard to tell. I think Toronto is probably the best bet for who will be the highest owned. I am probably going to miss live tonight. Um, yeah. uh, if anything, I'll get there right as so you probably you're getting off. Like if anything, I might get there by six thirty. Um, okay. uh, but um, that's about it. All right. Well, good luck to everybody tonight and I will see you live at six Eastern and uh, let's make some money. Good luck, everybody.